In light of recent announcements, we want to update pupils and parents about our plans for assessing pupils studying National 5, Higher and Advanced Higher SQA courses. Since that key announcement that there will be no external assessment this session, we've been working with pupils, staff and parent council to ensure we're going to do the right thing for our pupils. We've met with the SQA and other schools in seeking to get the very best fit and this short video is aimed at answering the questions you'll surely have. We're grateful for the formal and informal feedback we've had from pupils and parents that have helped shape our plans. It might be helpful to think about these plans in terms of the decisions that need to be made and at what level these decisions have been taken or will be taken. The main decision taken by the Scottish Government was that there would be no external exam diet for pupils in Scotland this session. At a school level, we want to ensure that we give our students the best possible opportunities to produce the evidence they will need for their courses. We will therefore maximise the time pupils are in school by not providing study leave. While we might have provided this during an intense period of assessment, like a prelim window, we'll not be having a short defined assessment window, so assessment leave is not appropriate. Because all assessments might form part of the evidence for a given pupil, it's important that we apply the same high standards to these assessments that the SQA would, and this includes the rules around malpractice. Pupils should not do anything which might be considered as attempting to gain an unfair advantage in any assessment. Because the assessment opportunities will be spread out throughout the next two terms, it would not be in our pupils' interests for us to put new learning on hold. Now, perhaps most importantly, to give pupils as much opportunity for a relaxing holiday as possible. And before we move to a period of time which they will see many significant assessment opportunities, we will not be delivering any further assessments till the week beginning the 18th of January. Some decisions are best taken by subject experts at a faculty level. These include how many key assessment opportunities will be provided, the length of these, will they be short, will they be long, will they be long assessments that are chunked up into smaller blocks, so the length of these, how they'll be structured. In different subject areas, different forms of assessment have different predictive values and staff will be seeking to ensure that they do the best they can for pupils in each subject area. It is important that pupils are also involved in making decisions about the timing of assessments, whether they wish to uh, have slightly less formal context of the classroom or the more formal hall type assessment experience. It's also important that they're involved in deciding what the assessments will cover on the understanding that there will need to be a complete coverage of the course as possible across all assessment opportunities. It might also be worth noting that psychologists suggest that our recall on assessments is best when we take the assessments under the same conditions as we learned the information that we're being assessed on. If pupils and their teachers opt for a longer assessment out of class time, this may impact on their learning in other subjects. In the first week back after the holidays, teachers will discuss and plan assessments with their classes, cross-referencing the dates chosen with plans across the school to ensure that assessments are suitably spaced out and acute pressure points are avoided for pupils. We will share the resulting timeline publicly so that parents can support their children in planning and preparing for these. We anticipate that that will be out at the start of the second week of term. We're working to five stages that have been outlined by the SQA. Um, stage one hasn't been shown and that's really just kind of the normal teaching and learning processes that you would get at the start of a course. In stage two, the SQA will sample some of our assessment evidence and give us feedback. This is to help ensure that we're being consistent in the standards we apply and that these are the same across Scotland. In stage three, we will take the feedback from the SQA and combine this with our own internal moderation processes, again making sure that the judgments we're reaching for every young person are sound, based on the available evidence and are line with national standards. Stage four involves final school level checks before we submit our initial results to the SQA by the 28th of May. 
During stage five, the SQA will look for any results that don't look right and ask schools to provide evidence to back up our judgments. It is possible that results could change at this stage, but we are confident that by getting it right for our pupils in the previous stages, that we will have very few, if any, outcomes affected by stage five. So why are we planning assessments in this way? Well, fundamentally, we believe this model and approach is getting it right for our pupils, that it gives the flexibility to match their needs across a range of subjects, ensuring that we are giving that flexibility and doing what's right for the kids. So will an algorithm be used to determine results this session? The SQA and Scottish Government have been very clear on this. There will be no programmatic algorithm used to determine pupil results. Results will be on the basis of, and only on the basis of, the evidence produced by the pupil under strict assessment conditions. No algorithms. So, will I know what the school submits to the SQA as my initial result? Well, do you know what? Yes. It's important that at each stage of their journey, pupils know where they're at in their learning and progress. Pupils must also understand that their overall performance can go up and down as they move through the course, covering new materials and applying their understanding in new and unfamiliar contexts. Just because a teacher judged early evidence as being at, let's say, B level, does not mean that additional evidence might result in an overall change up or down. It's why it's important to work hard from the go. So if the school is submitting initial results, does this mean that the SQA can change the results? Well, as explained, stage five can technically result in a change to the award initially given by the school, but we will be working very hard to ensure that these are very much the exception if they occur at all. Our job as teachers is to ensure that the evidence available matches the initial result we submit to the SQA, and there are a range of moderation processes to ensure we get these judgments right. When will the school decide my initial result? The review of evidence will be ongoing, however it will be substantially completed in the last weeks of May. At each stage though, we will let you know how you're doing, but you must keep working right up to the very end. The decisions we make about your evidence will be moderated as we work with other subject experts in school, between schools and with input from the SQA. Will there be an appeals process? Given that there are no external exams, there will be no SQA appeals process. But there is an existing school-based internal assessment appeals process, and that would apply. Any pupil who is concerned about the result of an assessment should, in the first instance, speak to their teacher. Only after they've done this, and if their concerns remain, should they then discuss the matter with their guidance teacher, will they be advised of the options available. In the event that learning is significantly interrupted, the SQA are likely to provide another mechanism to support candidates. Why will there be no assessments from the start of term to the 18th of January for our senior phase pupils? Well, we understand that some will want to study over the holidays, but we strongly believe that our students need a holiday. All students need to recognise that 18th of January onwards will be a period of ongoing assessment in all subject areas right up to the end of May, and we hope they come back suitably refreshed, ready to do their very best in what lies ahead. Will my child be overloaded with assessments? Well, do you know, we hope not, but everyone responds differently to the pressure of assessments. We will do all we can to reduce this pressure, but we cannot eliminate it entirely. And learning to cope with pressure is an important part of every learner's journey. There is a range of help available in school, however, and the first step would be for any pupil feeling under pressure to share this with family and with our principal teacher of guidance. What if I mess up an assessment? There will be a degree of discretion if one of your key assessments is clearly out of line with your other evidence. If you have a bad day, don't worry about it. You do, however, need to try and do your very best in each assessment opportunity. I know some will ask which assessments are important and you know I'm sure it's no surprise that I say all of them but your teachers will let you know which assessments are the most significant in terms of evidence 
but the evidence taken as a whole is important in demonstrating your attainment and so you must make that effort in all assessments. We hope that this has helped you gain a better understanding of where we are as we're planning for assessments in the terms to come and what it'll look like. We understand that you may have additional questions and we would ask that if you're a pupil, you contact your principal teacher of guidance to share these, or if you're a parent, you contact the school via email. We will do our very best to answer these as we work to help our pupils do their very best in session 2021. Please remember to take the holiday if you need it, and we look forward to welcoming back refreshed pupils and staff ready for the weeks ahead. Have a wonderful holiday.